Mr. Zarif. And finally, on Ukraine. We condemn continued attacks by separatists as they attempt to control additional territory in violation of the Minsk agreements. Today's vicious and repeated attacks on the Donetsk airport and the shelling of a bus that killed 10 people and wounded 13 are just the latest egregious violations of the commitments made by the Russia-backed separatists. We again call on Russia to fulfill its commitments under the Minsk agreements, which include ceasing its substantial, substantial military support to the separatists, restoring Ukrainian sovereignty over the international border between Ukraine and Russia, releasing all hostages, and working towards a peaceful resolution of the conflict in eastern Ukraine. And I think that's it. Brad. Well, why don't, why don't we stay on Ukraine since okay. uh, you raised it already. Um, you mentioned that these are violations by the Russian-backed separatists, uh -huh. and then you called on Russia to uh, adhere to the Minsk agreement. Mm -hmm. Do you see these acts of violence as um, directed by Russia or have Russian acquiescence, or are you merely just reiterating that in light of the violence? Well, I mean, nothing's changed. These are separatists that are clearly backed by Russia. Uh, we've talked about arms going to them, uh, actually Russian uh, soldiers fighting with them. Um, so clearly, uh, there are commitments that Russia made under the Minsk agreements that it's not living up to, um, that the separatists and Russia, who uh, has great control over them, also could, could, be in, could actually implement if they wanted to. Do you see this latest spate of violence as somehow uh, another attempt to destabilize Ukraine, uh, a, a new attempt, if you will, at, at trying to cause uh, problems on the eastern frontier? Well, it's certainly been an ongoing attempt, I would say, by Russia and the, and the separatists at backs to destabilize Ukraine. Um, certainly, we are, though, concerned, as I noted at the top, about this increased separatist violence. Um, we've seen an increase in violence over the past week. The OSCE Special Monitoring Mission has recorded over 150 ceasefire violations. So clearly, um, we're concerned about the uptick there. And given the the violence that mm -hmm. you mentioned, the, the bus attack and Donetsk Airport, yeah. mm -hmm. and, um, does this make the administration reassess in any way its opposition up to now to provide defensive military equipment to the Ukrainians? Well, our position on that hasn't changed. We obviously have an ongoing conversation with the Ukrainians about how we can help, but nothing new on that front. Uh, on the uh, on the monetary side, though, today the Treasury Department did announce, just I want to draw people's attention to it, uh, a loan guarantee of $1 billion to the government of Ukraine in the first half of 2015. Uh, if Ukraine continues making concrete progress on the economic reform side, I know that's not what you asked about, but on the economic reform agenda, uh, we would be willing, working with Congress, to provide an additional $1 billion. So we think there are ways uh, to assist Ukraine uh, that doesn't include lethal assistance. Obviously, we continue talking to them, though. So, just like, uh, so you said there was a $1 billion, and then you were talking to Congress about giving an, an additional $1 billion. In late 2015. So if they, uh, if Ukraine continues making concrete pro process, progress, excuse me, I was up a little late last night, um, progress on its economic reform agenda, uh, we will consider giving them another $1 billion in the later half of 2015. We'd obviously work with Congress on that. Uh, they'd have to do things like, you know, continue to overhaul the energy sector, repair its, their financial system, tackle corruption, things like that, that if they keep making progress on, uh, we will provide an additional yeah. loan guarantee. And I, I would assume that additional yeah. money also would be contingent on a deal with the IMF? Um, I can check on that. I know that on what I have here is that our additional loan guarantee would be contingent on them meeting these conditions, but I can check on the on the IMF uh, piece of that. And then, um, has there been direct contact uh, <coughs> or say between the Secretary Kerry and Lavrov um, uh, to express your anger at, at the continuing violence? Um, not The Secretary has not spoken to Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, in the past few days. I, I know other officials have been in touch with the Russians. I don't have specifics for you, though. Since you mentioned, mentioned the Russians, uh -huh. um, there, there were uh, calls from Russia recently to restart counterterrorism working group mm -hmm. or counterterrorism talks. 
Uh, is that being, uh, are you positive to that? I can, let me check with our team. We've talked to the Russians, including uh, the Secretary with Foreign Minister Lavrov, about counterterrorism just in their normal bilateral discussions. Um, certainly the Russians are very focused on it, uh, as are we. Um, but in terms of that specific dialogue, let me check. I think it was canceled because at some point it was found not to be very useful uh, in the broader context of yeah. the, the kind of breakdown in relations. I mean, have relations repaired enough that this would be something fruitful for both sides? I'll, I'll check on the specific dialogue. I do know that counterterrorism is one of those areas. You know, we always say there are areas we can work with the Russians on despite our disagreements on other things. So let me check on that. Yeah. Staying on terrorism.